I got it now. All right. Okay. You see it? Yep, there it is. All right. <clears throat> so we will get going then. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Stanton. I am a uh, research and engagement librarian at Arizona State University Library in lovely, warm Tempe, Arizona. Uh, and I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to talk to you all about Citizen Science Month and libraries uh, for the upcoming Citizen Science Month, April of 2020. Um, we've got a, a lot of ground to cover in a short period of time, and I tend to uh, kind of yak a little bit, so I'm going to kind of try to keep it moving. And um, my colleague Caroline is monitoring the chat, so if uh, something comes in, Caroline, that you think should be answered right then and there uh, that we won't get to, uh, let me know and we'll go ahead and answer it there. Um, so again, thank you. We're going to talk about Citizen Science Month and libraries. Um, I have also uh, work with SciStarter, which is uh, one of the organizations uh, behind Citizen Science Month along with the Citizen Science Association. And I work with the School for the Future of Innovation and Society here at Arizona State University, uh, who's also supporting this. So, uh, first thing we're going to talk about is, you know, what, what is citizen science? We find uh, that people get kind of caught up in um, what citizen science is. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and then SciStarter is the online resource that we're going to talk quite a bit about uh, that allows people to join citizen science projects and to really find them uh, and share them uh, with others who might be interested. And then uh, why libraries and citizen science? And if most of you are uh, working libraries uh, here in the US, you know that libraries uh, are awesome community resources. And so we'll talk a little bit about why we think libraries make a great uh, partner for citizen science projects in our communities. And then specifically, we've got some things coming up talking about April. Uh, until recently, it was Citizen Science Day, and now we have an entire month devoted to it, so we'll talk about that. And then resources. Uh, over the past few years, we have created a number of resources based on feedback uh, to help libraries and other community organizations Kind of get started with citizen science and so we really hope if you can host something uh, during the month of April for citizen science month that would be awesome if you can't host something uh, we hope that you will take some of the resources and kind of tag them on to some programming that you already have uh, that might be related just to kind of get the word out there and then if you can't do that uh, we're going to show you how you can find citizen science uh, activities, events around you, and you can go participate and find out what it's all about, and then come back and plan something at your own place. And then we'll talk finally about really in-person support uh, that Caroline provides uh, through SciStarter, um, because we're not just throwing a bunch of resources at you, uh, we wanna help you along the process. So. Here we go. So I'm just going to leave this up here, we'll talk about what citizen science is. Uh, and let me say that, you know, one of the first challenges of citizen science is defining citizen science. So if we think of scientists as professional, degreed researchers who study the world around them, citizen scientists are non-professionals, but they are interested in studying the world around them as well. And by following prescribed rules and procedures of real scientific research, they can contribute to uh, sci uh, scientific knowledge. As with other STEM activities, you will learn things, but unlike other STEM activities, you are actually contributing to scientific knowledge. 
really in the last century or so, science has been consigned to universities and government research labs, and it really leaves the bulk of society out of the research loop. Um, the explosion of innovation and technology means that there are ever larger amounts of data that can be readily collected and analyzed by more powerful and available tools. But this can't do everything. There's a lot of things, uh, nuanced uh, things that this technology can't do. And so science, scientists need help collecting more data and more help in analyzing that data. So um, hopefully in this session, you'll learn about citizen science uh, that is a, uh, a movement that's really taking hold all over the world and even in space. And in recent years, citizen science projects have discovered galaxies, detected and addressed local health issues, and inventoried both endangered and ins invasive species. For researchers, citizen science provides expanded opportunities for engaging data collection and dissemination of research with the general public. But how do researchers connect with members of the community and recruit and involve them in research projects, ensuring quality of data and disseminating fi uh, their findings? For non-scientists, citizen science is an invitation to participate in real science by following the established project protocols or procedures for data collection, analysis, and reporting. Um, but how do members of the community find projects where they can turn their curiosity into impact and engage in lifelong learning? Citizen science can be fun, but it's also serious science. And so citizen science increases uh, long-term environmental civic research interests, inclusion of underrepresented populations in the scientific process, just sheer confidence that people have, scientific literacy, domain knowledge, which means uh, knowledge of a particular or specialized discipline or field of science, and contributes to scientific pro progress. We know that people can get nervous if you tell them, well, you're going to be doing research. But scientific protocols or steps or procedures require skills really that we use every day. Uh, observation, uh, you know, if you've played the state plates game on long car rides, you can, you can count and identify pollinators coming to your flowers. Um, analysis, if you can sort buttons you have in your junk drawer or put photos in rough chronological order, you can have the skills to maybe sort galaxies or track changes in your neighborhood. So because it's couched in scientific research doesn't mean uh, they aren't skills that we don't that we do every day. And so here are some popular citizen science activities, and you see that information there. Th those are January of this year. Those statistics. So, someone you know is a citizen scientist, whether they're uh, tracking birds or testing water or searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. And impact of citizen science. You know, birds are breeding earlier because people have been tracking them year after year. Uh, there are 50 or more types of bacteria that live in your belly button. That is in itself worth the price of admission right there. Um, there's all kinds of things that citizen scientists have uh, contributed to uh, in terms of scientific knowledge. And it's not just knowledge. Um, it contributes more than just data. Uh, if you're thinking about lab time and um, you know, manpower, things like that, uh, this study from 2014 shows that 338 citizen science projects contributed between 1.3 and 2.3 uh, million citizen scientists contributed an economic value of 2.5 billion per year. So there's all kinds of upsides to citizen science for uh, we, the participants, and for researchers. So millions of people enjoy science and nature, and thousands of scientists need 
volunteers to gather data, but they can't find each other. And so that's how SciStarter came to be. And SciStarter, I'll let you watch this video. Let's see if this works for us. We can't really hear it, Dan, so maybe you could narrate over it. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know if that'll w work here. You can turn the sound off and then um, just play the images and explain to us a little bit about it. That'd be awesome. Thank you. All right, let's try that. So showing that citizen science can change the world, obviously it's going to be showing a number of different ways that people can engage in citizen science. And you see people of all walks of life, that's the beauty of it, uh, engaged in citizen science individually and in groups uh, doing uh, biodiversity, um, doing things with uh, water in terms of uh, water purity and um, rainwater, groundwater, things like that. Libraries have gotten involved uh, as well because of the, the place that uh, they have in our communities. And so we'll go over some of these things on the SciStarter site here, uh, the ways that you can narrow down. SciStarter has uh, 3,000 citizen science projects there. So there are ways that you can go in there and uh, search by keyword, search by an activity that you might be interested in and in doing it. If you walk your dog every day, you can find a citizen science project that you can do while you're uh, walking your dog. Uh, there are things, you know, generally, because this is real science and a lot of the reporting is online, um, we tend to uh, state that these are for adults, but certainly if adults are interested in uh, doing these, it makes a great family or classroom activity. Uh, with students, a lot of homeschool folks are interested in it because they, it's something they can all do together and is real science. And again, you'll see people are doing the things uh, that they normally do during their days. They are uh, observing, recording, and reporting. So uh, I'll show you where that video is on the, um, on the website when we get there. And um, it'll also be when we email the slides to you all out afterward, um, it'll be in the slide deck. And we also have a number of other videos that'll be in our follow-up email that you can all watch. Absolutely. So as I mentioned, uh, SciStarter is uh, an inventory of 3000 projects. It's actually more than just an inventory. It's uh, the, the organization, the whole idea behind it is getting uh, value, uh, adding value for both researchers, project managers, and people who are interested in doing citizen science. So the citizen science team is always working uh, to make things easier for researchers and uh, citizen scientists to get together and really have uh, meaningful impact and value in their lives. So you can search things uh, there's a project finder. You can search things by a particular activity, uh, by a location, and you know even things like that. What's cool about citizen science? Here I am in Tempe, Arizona, which is in the middle of the Sonoran Desert. I may not be able to do find projects near me that deal with activity on a beach, but there are uh, citizen science projects where you're analyzing uh, data. Uh, online that may do with ocean life. So here in the desert, I could be doing scientific research that deals with oceanography. Pretty cool. Things you can do indoor, outdoor, online, offline. Uh, the project finder also has ways that you can narrow things down by those projects that have classroom materials and seem to be geared for uh, students or people, I should say, of, uh, of all ages there. And SciStarter also allows participants to track their contributions over time and over projects. So when you join SciStarter by going to SciStarter.org and 
creating an account. Uh, what you're doing is you're putting yourself in there and then the projects that you participate in, you will be the only one that can see your dashboard uh, in terms of you and your project. So you can see the observations that you've made, um, how, how often you've done things, and depending on uh, what projects that you've done, we've also uh, uh, will push uh, projects that we think you might be interested in. So again, uh, just kind of ways to keep it, keep it fresh, keep it interesting for you. Um, and then, you know, you can see your, uh, your contributions over time, whether you're doing something very deep in one particular project or in many different projects. And then SciStarter, as I mentioned, is, is working continuously to improve the experience for both volunteers and scientists, uh, increasing access and working with uh, valuable partners. Um, but even with all that, uh, there are some challenges with citizen science. Go. Um, SciStarter started focusing on libraries, and we've been amping things up ever since. One of the challenges that SciStarter found was oftentimes there are uh, there's tools or equipment that may be needed to do a particular citizen science project. Now, I may be interested in measuring light pollution, but I may not want to purchase my own sky quality meter for $150. So enter the library. We check things out for our community. Uh, if the library purchases a sky quality meter and has a library kit uh, that people can check out, uh, more people are apt to participate and get started in that. Um, also with libraries, um, when people do citizen science, you find a project online, you make your observations, you contribute your reports, um, you get information about what your contributions were from the project, but you may feel a little bit isolated. So again, libraries as a community hub uh, is an idea that we are very interested in um, developing with citizen science projects, getting groups of people together who are interested in citizen science. And so we started a pilot project with the Institute of Museum and Library Services, where we had um, six public libraries here in the Phoenix area. And what you see here is our first Citizen Science Day. This was two years ago. And we were just kind of getting started. We didn't have any kits set up, um, but we suggested that libraries, the libraries participating um, have a display for Citizen Science Day. And what's kind of cool is you see the, the books and things there, they already had Citizen Science books and other resources in their collections before we even really got rolling. So we created a few, uh, you see the intergra interactive poster there. Um, we created those so that people can stop by, take a look and put a little post-it note on our tree about what they were interested in in terms of citizen science. Entree into uh, our libraries with Citizen Science Day uh, 2018. And then we, based partly on the, the information we got from communities from Citizen Science Day, um, we, we took a look at the 3,000 projects that SciStarter offers, and we narrowed them down to some uh, projects that had been um, around and, and working well for a few years and covered the uh, scientific domains, uh, the scientific areas that people were interested in. And we came up with kits uh, that would allow people to um, check out the kits, participate in the project, and return the kits. And so, you know, with that, as you can imagine, we were talking about six public libraries, but there were uh, six libraries in five different library jurisdictions. So we had two Maricopa County libraries, 
and then we had um, um, city libraries for Apache Junction, Arizona, Mesa, Tempe, Scottsdale, and with that, you know, we had some issues with being able to bring them all together uh, on the same thing, but the, you know, all the libraries worked together. We created these cards, these checkout cards with um, the labels on them that you pick up the card, you bring it to the desk, check it out and check out the kits. And so now, as you can see in the lower left-hand corner there, we've been working on this for a few years. Uh, if you go to scistarter.org slash library kits, you'll get information about this project, um, all the projects that we have going on, and then also information about how to build your own kits uh, with information about how to order things. And then this is a, you know, based on that, uh, last year, as I said, we've been amping things up. We created a, a library, the library, librarian's guide to citizen science. And, and this year uh, we have updated it with lessons learned. Uh, and it is now the library and community guide to citizen science. And you see the hot off the press date of February, 2020 there. Um, but it was lessons learned, learned programming examples that uh, libraries have had and uh, user feedback. The libraries have been uh, just great in terms of helping us get started, uh, but also with providing feedback on um, ways we can improve that. And that is uh, something, again, that I mentioned SciStarter is all about. So uh, last year, we formally partnered with the National Network of Libraries of Medicine um, for Citizen Science Day. And we had a, uh, an event uh, called a, a Stall Catcher Megathon. We, we, because it was National Network of Libraries of Medicine, we wanted to focus on a health-related um, citizen science project. And we, we selected Stall Catchers, which is a a uh, completely online project where you um, view blood flows through the brain of a of a mouse and if you believe that in the little micro video that you're watching the blood flow stops you mark that as a stall um, and then send that information in and it's kind of a gamified thing and in one hour in a, an event across the country, um, we got over four months worth of lab time out of the way uh, by doing that. Um, unfortunately, uh, we were a little short-sighted. Uh, it was Citizen Science Day last year was on a Saturday. So that meant, you know, a lot of public libraries have uh, reduced hours on Saturdays if, if they're open. Um, schools are not in session. And it was a synchronous one hour time period that would benefited us here in the United States, but people around the world are doing citizen science and they wanted to get involved in this. And so we have uh, contact with people in Nigeria who were doing citizen science stall catchers in the middle of the night there uh, because they're so into it. So citizen science got too big for one day. And so now, we have gone to an entire month of citizen science. And along the way, we have uh, attracted some pretty high profile partners for which we are grateful. Um, here is a page from SciStarter. This is uh, one of our partnerships with uh, the National uh, Library of Medicine. Um, again, we're partnering with them on health-related uh, citizen science projects that you can do. And you'll see here, um, Globe at Night is a light pollution uh, project. Flu near you, obviously, is, is tracking uh, flu symptoms. That was selected before uh, the coronavirus uh, issue hit. Uh, debris Tracker, uh, submitting sightings of litter where you are. 
you kind of take pictures of it to, to track it and also what kind of things you're, you're seeing there. I see change. Um, you take photos of kind of your environment um, and you can see what kind of changes weather uh, and climate have in your community. You know, let's say you have a, 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 a big windstorm and trees get torn down, things like that, you can document that. And then there's stall catchers, which is an Alzheimer's research game. And then Crowd the Tap is a relatively new project, um, kind of uh, created in the aftermath of the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Uh, we realized there is no national inventory of lead pipes uh, that are used for water in the United States. So with a, a simple penny and magnet, uh, you can uh, test the pipes in your home and then contact your utility provider to have them uh, provide information about the, the pipes coming into your house. And then as you see here on this page, you know, the National Libraries of Medicine obviously is a, an important source of um, accurate, timely information. And you'll see there in the bottom left, there's links there uh, to updated coronavirus uh, information there. And then further on down in the, uh, on that particular page, um, we provided some information about um, introductions to citizen science. There's a tutorial there. Uh, it takes about 30 minutes to do. Uh, it's an interactive tutorial. Again, this is important because we're finding that people kind of balk at citizen science, not really sure what it is, but this is a, an easy way to move through it and learn what citizen science is. It was created by, um, instructional designers here at the Arizona State University. Um, and you know more information about NLM and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, which many of you, uh, that's probably how you heard about this uh, webinar, is uh, they have been great partners and the National Network of Libraries of Medicine um, are located and serve all around the United States, uh, bringing quality, um, library resources to libraries. So we're grateful for that. And here's, here's an example of a screenshot for uh, part of the uh, tutorial there. Why would you visit the SciStarter.org NLM website? Um, again, this is information on working through things uh, so that you can get, you and your patrons can get involved in uh, citizen science projects. So this page, uh, scistarter.org slash citizen science month dash resources. Uh, this is kind of um, a, a great page to keep in mind uh, in terms of like a, we're calling it kind of has resources for a program in a box. So if you are interested in leading um, an event at your library or anywhere else regarding citizen science. Um, there's all the resources that you could possibly need uh, to introduce that to your communities. So we have, you see online resources, getting started. You've got the two minute video that I showed. You've got the 30 minute uh, educational module. And then we actually have a number of how-to videos for different projects, uh, some past webinars that we've presented um, with um, the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, the Citizen Science Association, that the library guide book lists, uh, obviously is a good thing. Um, skills beginning guidelines, Again, what are some ways that you can demonstrate to people that they have already have the skills uh, to do uh, what citizen science calls for? And then lots of promotional uh, resources that you can download and you can brand uh, with your own um, library or institution on there so you can make it your own. And again, here's some more of that. 
even yard signs. You know, people are very particular with uh, with what it is that works in their community. So our awesome um, graphic designer uh, came up with a uh, yard signs. It's I guess it's you know maybe counter affect the uh, the political system. You can have a citizen science uh, sign up. So this page here is scistarter.org slash citizen science month. This is kind of the page to remember. You'll see there, uh, it's all, will point you in the right direction in terms of finding other events, learning about citizen science month, learning about citizen science, uh, registering your events because we want other people to be able to find it and signing up for uh, assistance, FAQ and so on. And on that page as well, uh, we have some of the uh, resources towards uh, featured projects from the National, uh, the National Library of Medicine. Um, and then what's also cool is uh, April's a big month for um, outdoors kind of stuff. It's, uh, this year is going to be the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. The City Nature Challenge is happening. Um, National Library Week is during that time and we're hoping if you if you have a choice in the matter if you have Friday the 24th as your library citizen science day that would be great um, so this is a way that you can find out what other people are doing um, you can um, pick a theme that might work for you and the interest of your community um, and explore things that way and Dan we had a question come in someone asked can you do a project in other months, not April? I'll let you answer that live. Um, absolutely. And in fact, one of the things I hope people will walk away from this is, you know, Citizen Science Month really is just our way of saying, okay, we, we've got all this stuff going on with Citizen Science. We just want to really focus public, um, focus on Citizen Science during that month. But these things, uh, these projects are all things you can do throughout the year. And, you know, it is, it is uh, already March. And so again, if you don't have uh, the means to schedule something for April, that we certainly don't want you to just say, oh, well, I missed it this year. We want you to, to schedule something when it works for you. And the, all those resources will be there um, SciStarter will be there uh, in terms of helping you out, all that stuff. So absolutely. And that calendar is up year round. So you can do things uh, anytime during the year. There might be some things on there that you, that you find of interest. Definitely. Uh, and, Even just this morning, someone asked me, am I allowed to have an event in May? And I said, are you allowed? That'd be amazing. You can <laughs> add your events to SciStarter anytime, not just April. Absolutely. And some of the other things that we're working on to kind of go with that, um, how to facilitate citizen science in your community is we're, we're working on some extension activities uh, that people can uh, add to their presentations. Um, you know, uh, SciStarter already works with Girl Scouts on uh, some particular projects. Uh, we're looking for um, popu you know, 55 and up population. Um, we're looking for gardeners, uh, amateur astronomers, homeschoolers. We're gonna, we're gonna be uh, showcasing some, some uh, extension activities for those uh, particular populations uh, to help them focus on the skills uh, and projects that they can do in that. We're also, uh, National Library of Medicine is gonna be um, translating uh, some of the information into Spanish. Um, we're also practicing some promotions and advertising direct to people here in the Phoenix area now to, on social media to kind of boost our, um, our awareness of folks here in the Phoenix area. Um, and we've been working with organizations such as the National Network of Libraries of Medicine and the, the Arizona State Library um, 
in terms of getting grants. Our state library here uh, has included citizen science as an LSTA micro grant this year. So uh, people here in Arizona, libraries here in Arizona can submit a proposal to get up to $3,000 to purchase kits and uh, have funding for programming in their libraries. I think that's pretty cool. And so uh, for those of you around the country, uh, plant that seed and if your uh, state library uh, is, is not already uh, offering grants, citizen science grants for LSTA, see if you can get it on their radar. Um, we think it's a we think it's a, a great match. And then we also have I got a little one panel here of uh, Carla the the cat who's a librarian planning a, a citizen science event. You will have to go to the uh, to the website uh, in order to see how that cartoon turns out. But it's pretty cool. And then again. Uh, we had a, we're in the midst of a social media takeover uh, in terms of Twitter and Instagram at Sit Sci Month for both of those. And we have uh, people from different organizations who are taking it over and focusing on what their organizations or what their country uh, is doing uh, with citizen science. And it's been very interesting to see what people have been uh, promoting. So I highly recommend uh, you go check out Sit Sign Month on Twitter and Instagram and, you know, take a look back and see what kinds of things have been posted because we've had museum people, we've had uh, myself doing libraries, we've had academics, uh, we've had um, the Asian Citizen Science Association, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's pretty cool. And then um, you'll see here we've got... National Library of Medicine. So everyone, make sure you follow now so you don't miss them when they come online on Sunday. That's right. And don't forget to set your clocks too. We don't do clocks. We don't do daylight savings time here in Arizona. So I'll make that pitch there. And then you see there are featured events. Again, uh, if you're doing things, share that you're doing things because it's very important for others to see that so that they can come and participate or get ideas and get in touch. So lastly, Citizen Science Month is bigger and better than ever. And those two uh, URLs there, SciStarter.org, Citizen Science Month, and CitizenScienceMonth.org are great places to go there for your planning. Um, you can get into the Introduction to Citizen Science, the interactive module, you can fi find free, brandable, downloadable flyers, bookmarks, posters um, to promote things. Um, Caroline does weekly office hours by phone. She doesn't get much sleep on Thursday. She does three times for global time zones. So uh, wherever you are, there's a, there's a call for you. And then we are also looking at build, borrow, and buy links and instructions uh, so that people can uh, take the work we've done and kind of make it their own. And that's, that's really something that's been uh, satisfying as well as uh, we have kind of the little plastic Tupperware kits that we've used here in the Phoenix area. Uh, Los Angeles Public Library System has, has adopted like um, soft pack things that people can put in their backpacks. Some places are doing backpacks. Um, you know, however, however it works for you, um, as long as you've got the, you know, the, the right equipment in there and the, the information uh, to do the, the projects properly, go for it. That's awesome. And then participating. Uh, SciStarter has a project finder. Again, I mentioned that that you can go on there and find things by a particular scientific topic, a particular activity, things you can do during the day, things you can do at night, things you can do on a beach, um, and so on. People Finder, that's an interesting one as well. If you are uh, hosting a project or hosting an event um, or want some people who, to volunteer, you can send out uh, an email to people who 
on SciStarter who have identified that they are open to uh, being contacted and you may get some uh, friendly experienced folks uh, to come out and, and help with your events, which is a, a bonus. And then there's uh, the events finder as well. And then again, uh, just to, to take a look at the health related projects that we are focusing on uh, for Citizen Science Month, that is SciStarter.org slash NLM. And then yes, for those of you who uh, wondered about whether we could do this outside of April, then repeat, go ahead and, and you know, keep in touch. Things will be changing. We're always uh, updating things, trying to uh, improve on things, trying to, um, again, make things easier for researchers and for participants. And I think with that, I will pass it over to Caroline. Yes, Dan, if you could keep sharing your screen, I'll let you continue sure. to drive. But, um, um, everyone, before we get into more discussion-oriented parts of our call and the more questions-oriented parts of our call, we thought we'd just give you three clear like things you could do today. Um, so number one is find featured projects and resources on citizenscienceblog.org. Many of you may already be planning an Earth Day event, for example. Um, so on citizenscienceblog.org, you could find posters and flyers that you could distribute at your Earth Day event so people could go home and find a project to protect the planet, like I See Change, which is one of the National Library of Medicine featured projects, you'll find on citizenscienceblog.org. Or you could go on citizenscienceblog.org and look at our book list and say, hey, maybe I'll just make a book display this year, and that'll be my event. Um, no matter what, you'll find something there that you could use, and maybe you could use some of those resources to plan an event later this year, or even in 2021. Um, another thing you can do today is make a size turner now. Um, you, I, please make sure you use an email that you know is an email you use often because we'll we'll ping you and give you um, different ways to do citizen science near you. Our special programs. Um, it's just if you make a science starter account now, I think it'll pay off later and it'll help keep you in the loop um, with all these different citizen science opportunities. And also, you'll be able to keep track of the projects you join in your science starter dashboard. Um, and for some of those projects, the ones, especially the ones on the National Library of Medicine page, you'll be able to keep track of the frequency and number of your contributions to those projects in your dashboard as well, because those are called SciStarter affiliates. So not to get too in the weeds, but if you go to citizenscienceblog.org, you make a SciStarter account, you access some resources, we think good things will come of it. So next slide. The second thing we want you to do, even if you're not planning an event in April, we hope that you um, join the weekly calls. Um, so those are ways for you to share ideas and brainstorm and you never know who's going to be on it. Like Dan said, it's all people from all over the world. So some of our friends from Nigeria might be on the line. Um, some of our friends from Europe might be on the line. Someone from a, you know, NNLM PSR, the Pacific Southwest region might be on the line. Um, and they're at 8 a.m., 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern every Thursday. Um, so feel free to hop on whenever you'd like to just discuss and um, learn what others are doing and maybe get some feedback on your own ideas about citizen science. All right, let's go to the next slide. And the last thing, and I know you might not be able to do this today, but after you know, you've reviewed the future projects and resources, you've made your account, you've joined one of the weekly calls, why don't you plan a citizen science month event? This could be a virtual event. So you could um, just have a webinar and invite people to that. I know um, uh, one person um, in Ohio, the um, science center there, they're doing a webinar for people in their area about ways they can uniquely contribute to citizen science in Ohio. So even though it's an online event, it's still um, tailored to their community. So your event doesn't necessarily have to be in person. You can add an online event to SciStarter too. And um, it doesn't have to be completely focused on citizen science either. Let's say theoretically you're planning an Earth Day event, right? You could just have a small citizen science component. You could have everyone um, uh, download um, IC Change, that project Dan mentioned, where you can monitor weather and climate. You could just have people um, start doing IC Change at that event as part of, like, you know, maybe you have a, ta a table for it, or just a flyer, um, some flyers about it so people can learn more, or a little station for it. You could still add that event to SciStarter because it has a citizen science component. And um, if you do have some free time, free space in April to plan events, we hope that you choose to do so during National Library Week, especially on that Friday. 
um, because we're calling that Citizen Science Day in library. So I'd love to see um, uh, pictures from it on social media or, you know, just we'd love to hear about your work. Um, and we'd love to hear if you plan any events during April and especially during National Library Week that focus on citizen science. Great. So let's go to our next slide. I think that might be it. I think that's it. I'd actually yeah. like to I'd like to add on to what you were just saying. We didn't really get into this in the in the webinar, but you know, if you're working in libraries or working in other uh, community related organizations, you're probably already aware of other groups in your community uh, that are active uh, uh, in sharing kind of science information with the public. Uh, here in the Phoenix area, one of the one of the groups that um, really showed us right off the bat uh, how some of this could be done was we have a, an East Valley Astronomy Club, and they already work at lending telescopes at uh, one of our libraries and coming into the library and doing programming. So that was one of the reasons we thought, well, the Globe at Night project, which uh, monitors uh, light pollution, would be a great thing. To tie into that, and they were they certainly were uh, interested in that. Now here it is a couple years later, in you know that project, uh, the Globe at Night project measuring light pollution. You know there's a there's an international dark skies uh, association that's you know based here in Tucson and is international. And uh, there's a, a gentleman in Ohio who has kind of seen. Uh, what we've done with with the um, Globe at Night project, and he's reaching out to uh, public libraries in Ohio uh, and doing programming and uh, as an astronomer um, to share more information uh, than just what is involved in that project. And that's what's really kind of cool about citizen science is you you know you are learning about um, a particular activity or uh, studying something, uh, but things really branch all over the place. And um, you as folks who are, you know, work with the public and partner with other folks in your communities, uh, again, just a perfect way to, to bring some people in to share uh, their expertise uh, with the communities as well. So keep that in mind uh, as you're thinking, wow, I don't know if I can do this by myself. You've got, I'm sure you are aware of folks who, who uh, are experts that would love to be able to come to the library and speak. Definitely, and we just got a question in. Someone asked, how do you join the weekly call? It's via Zoom and the dial-in is at citizensciencemonth.org. Um, and then let's see, let's get through all these questions. Um, Darlene said, and Darlene is on the line, she's the founder of SciSpreader, shameless promotion, your library might want to also consider ordering this book, um, which Darlene co-authored, um, written to help introduce people to citizen science and how to get involved. And I will say, even if I didn't work for SciSpreader, I would love this book. I think it's just a beautiful book. And um, it's called The Field Guide to Citizen Science. So it's a very good introductory book. It's a book basically you could hand to anyone if they knew nothing about citizen science and they could get started with it. Um, but someone asked, um, let's see, uh, what's the difference between SciStar.org and CitizenScienceMonth.org? The short answer is nothing. We just um, made it CitizenScienceMonth.org as a redirect just to make it easy for people. You know, if I'm at an event and I want to make sure that they're able, if I'm able to tell someone something and I want them to remember it, I'll say CitizenScienceMonth.org just to make their lives easier so they can type it right in. But otherwise, um, SciStarter.org, it just redirects to SciStarter.org forward slash CitizenScienceMonth. So they're the same thing. We just have both of those available to make sure the maximum number of people find the resources we want to share with them. Um, let's see, any other things came through? Someone said, April was pretty much host for us as Maryland has early voting and we're a polling place and elections are crazy busy. And Darlene said, vote for citizen science. Um, you can, like Dan said, you can get that yard sign <laughs> for citizen science month. And um, joking aside, uh, please like plan an event for May or whenever you have time. Um, 
whatever way you're able to integrate citizen science into your library or to your community, that's just fantastic. Robin said, Dan, I've had good luck working with botanical gardens and zoos. Astronomy clubs are almost always willing to share. That's definitely true. Um, at SciStarter, we're big proponents, proponents of grow by connecting. Um, so we just urge you to forge partnerships, you know, with astronomy clubs, with other institutions in your area to plan events together. Um, let's see. Someone said it's easy to get lost in SciStarter, so we set up a distinct URL to help people find what they need for Citizen Science Month. Yep, that is true. Um, that's part of the beauty of it, right? There's, there are resources there for you to explore. Someone asked, is there a SciStarter app? There is not, but the website is mobile accessible, so you should be able to use it on your phone. So I'll say we answered that. And someone raised their hand, so I'm going to click allow to talk so Jean Cooper can ask a question. So um, Jean, I have unmuted you, and I've also, someone else raised their hand? Nope, just Jean. So Jean, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask a question if you need to. Um, Robin said, I love iNaturalist and going to participate in the City Nature Challenge which uses iNaturalist to observe living things. That's right. iNaturalist is a really popular citizen science project. And on SciStarter, if you make an iNaturalist account, you can go into your SciStarter dashboard into the info and settings and add your iNaturalist username so you can keep track of the number and frequency of your contributions to iNaturalist all in your SciStarter dashboard. Um, Darlene said, you can go to SciStarter.org and download the home screen on mobile. Um, that's right, that way you have an icon on your phone um, to make it even easier for you to access. Uh, any other questions from folks or just like things to share? Someone said, we do a lot of STEM programming and now I'm thinking to get into the SciStarter to get ideas for more programming. Definitely, um, that's the beauty. You can form a program around any citizen science project really. Stall catchers is a really good one to do that for. It's on one of the National Library of Medicine featured projects. Um, as long as you have a computer lab or even just some tablets, um, you could get a bunch of people in a room together and have them do stall catchers and speed up the search for a cure to Alzheimer's disease. Someone said, is SciStarter connected to Zooniverse at all? There are a number of Zooniverse projects listed in the SciStarter project finder. So you can, like one, one project, um, which I love, is called Notes from Nature. So if you search that on the SciStarter project finder, it would come up and that is a Zooniverse project. Um, someone said, I'm an instructor in a local education program for seniors. I'm hoping to develop a class on citizen science. What would be a good resource for seniors who may have limited mobility? Well, that tutorial that Dan showed earlier in the slides is a really good resource to introduce citizen science, um, including to seniors. Um, you, can go, you can find that tutorial at the bottom of SciStarter.org forward slash NLM as well as on citizenscienceemonth.org. It's basically an interactive clickable tutorial. It takes about 30 minutes to do with a group. And then after that, you could pair that tutorial with a project like Stall Catchers. Stall Catchers is particularly good for people who have limited mobility because all they need is a internet access to do the project. They could do it completely on a smartphone, computer, or tablet. Um, someone said, friends are of the library are a resource for partnership this April. Definitely. Yeah, we urge you to partner with um, the people who are around you in your communities and bring more people into citizen science because citizen science is for everyone. Um, Darlene said, thousands of projects and platforms like Zooniverse are included on SciStarter. We help people find and join and track contributions to projects, but SciStarter is not typically where someone adds or analyzes data. That's correct. We're the connector. So we connect anybody and anyone to citizen science projects that need their help. All right, any more? Dan, do you have any other thoughts that you wanted to share or any closing messages for everyone while we wait, wait for those last few questions to come in? No, not at this point. Well, one note for everybody, if you haven't yet, please add your zip code and where you're calling in from to the chat. It just helps us keep track of things. Ooh, another question came in. Someone said, this was great. Thank you, Stacy. That's so nice of you to say. And we hope that um, Citizen Science Month is great for you too. And um, I hope to see you on the weekly calls. Come see me next Thursday. Let's have a conversation. Um, Darlene said, um, see SciStarter.org forward slash library dash kits. There's a tutorial there that was designed by instructional designers at Arizona State University and senior citizens will like it, dot, 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 I think. Yes, and you can find that same tutorial um, on citizenscienceemonth.org.
Um, yeah, so please keep those zip codes coming. Um, keep any questions coming. We'll stick around until three o'clock. So you have a few more minutes with us. And thank you so much to Dan for presenting today. And thank you as well to the National Library of Medicine for making this possible and to Arizona State University School for the Future of Innovation and Society for their partnership on this presentation. The recording will be available. Um, we'll email it out to everyone who subscribed to this webinar. Um, and we'll also post it on our YouTube channel so you can share it with um, others who you think might be interested. Oh, we had one more question. When will you get the slides out to participants? Um, as soon as possible. So it may not be till Monday, but we will definitely um, ping you via email if you registered for the webinar um, as soon as those are available. Okay. Someone said, I just graduated from ASU. Um, <laughs> Dan will know this acronym, MLFTC. Mary Lou Fulton Teachers College. All right. It, do you say go Sun Devils? Is that, is that the proper greeting? Uh, go Devils, fear the fork. Fear the fork, okay, fear the fork. Someone said, love hearing about the dementia project. We have a focus on providing leveled reading material to people with dementia, so that'll be a good match. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, that's the important thing with citizen science. You can tie it to things people really care about. They can address issues they're concerned about with citizen science. I mean, flu near you, for example, I know I've been thinking a lot about flu-like illness, so it empowers me to do the flu near you project. Oh, and uh, you know, yeah, one of the things to mention, uh, there is a project you can find on SciStarter called Foldit, one word, F-O-L-D-I-T, and it's, a, it's an online, completely online uh, project that uses kind of, I guess it's like solving puzzles uh, that help scientists with uh, folding proteins, but they have just uh, dedicated uh, their lab and the project to the coronavirus. And so I just noticed today they had a tweet that said they're on their second round of uh, research with uh, the coronavirus. So again, uh, if you go to the site, I'm sure it can explain how it all fits in, but you know, it, it is, it's something that respond, you know, can be responsive to uh, things going on right now. And that's pretty cool. Definitely. Um, and Darlene just put in the chat, she said, email darkhav1 at gmail.com. If you're interested in learning about OSHER slash OLLI programs we are working on, which is training for people over the age of 55 to introduce citizen science to libraries. So that's another thing you all could do too. I know for many of you, you may be coordinators or leaders of others. You can do um, events, maybe one in April even, where you train others to facilitate citizen science, kind of like a train the trainer sort of event. So that's a leadership role we encourage others to pursue. Let's spread the word about citizen science. Looks like we have another question. Someone said, thank you from Burke, Virginia. Thank you, Jill. Thanks for joining us today. Um, Darlene, did you, do you have any final words in our last minute? No, Darlene says, nope, thanks to everyone. And yeah, thank you. I think we'll, we'll conclude it there. I feel like we've given everyone a chance to ask a question. Um, if you need anything else, um, follow up with us via email. Better yet, join the weekly calls next week on Thursday so we can chat again. Um, and if you like this presentation, please head over to Twitter, Instagram, wherever you spread the word about things, um, and tag at SitSciMonth on Twitter to um, share all this with others. So. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you all.